Thank you everyone for joining me again. I'm your host Emmanuel Mutui and today I have a wonderful guest. We have known each other for about three years now. We went to the same Bible school and we've we have a very brotherly relationship. He bullies me a lot. I'm playing, I'm playing, he does. <laughs> but yeah, he's a good friend of mine. And without further ado, Mr. Rich Kenyali. Brother, how are you? Thanks I'm, for having me. Hey, the honor is mine. Every, every time somebody comes on my show, I'm the one who's honored. Especially a man who, who has the future that, like, that, you, that you have. Because from what you're doing now, where you're going, and you'll see as the story develops, he's going places, people. Amen. Praise God. So, to start off, so that people can know who I'm talking to, well, tell me more about you in terms of, so we're going to have to go back. Back in, he's from Uganda, and he'll talk more about that. How are you in Uganda? What was, what was the childhood that you have, and what was your mindset of like life at the time? Well, um, born and raised in Uganda, like Emmanuel uh, said, by the way, thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe that as Emmanuel and I go through this and talk and share, that the Lord will use this to really impact your life. I truly believe that. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that. And so um, I'm not just here to talk about myself, but I'm here just to tell you what God has done in my life and hopefully this could be a blessing to you. So I truly believe it's going to be phenomenal. That being said, born and raised in Uganda, Emmanuel, and um, uh, lived in Uganda for about 20 years of my life. Now I'm an old man. Uh, but anyway, um, growing up I was just like any other young child, or any other child in Uganda. Knew very little, you know, mm -hmm. all it was all about education, like, you know, mm -hmm. Uganda, Kenya, same thing. Just study hard, get the best grades, mm -hmm. go get a job and just live life. So basically, that was my, my really Ugandan life. And, but I, I did my, uh, my schooling and then thereafter I left Uganda. But yeah, just growing up in Uganda is, is a very different life, you know, yeah. compared to growing up in the States or living in the States. And, uh, Again, I'm so thankful for what God has done mm -hmm. so far personally in my life. And again, I'm speaking for me, but man, I'm so thankful yeah. from where God has brought me from, mm -hmm. the poverty days, <laughs> to where I'm living right now. Praise yeah. God. I could get anything I, I want apart from a jet, you know. <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Let's, go, cool. let's go on this journey together. So you in Uganda, you've, I mean, for those, if you're from Africa, any third world country, you'll kind of understand that statement growing up in another country. But for Americans, it's different. It's not a lot of opportunities. And when you were there, did you ever think about your future or what was your mindset like when it comes to when you grew up? Well, one thing that I do know for sure is I, I wanted to leave Uganda and just go either to Europe or the US, mm -hmm. something that I designed to do and I can tell you why, one of the reasons actually was because it looked like people that went to Europe or the United States were very successful and everybody was like, when I grow up I want to go to Europe or to the West and so for me, mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing that I wanted to do and of course there are other things that I wanted to do in my life, mm -hmm. um, but when I was young I didn't have clear direction, I was just really going through school. Yeah, <laughs> and just see what that brings thereafter. So, and when do you, as you're growing up, because from I know this from because we talked about it, you're kind of in a Christian environment, but you're not really a Christian. When did that start becoming real? Man, I don't know about people that are watching, but personally, I played the church game. I went to church. First, let me say this: not even the game. I love going to church. We were raised going to church and all these things. But one thing is very clear. I wasn't a believer. Let me say this, let me speak to somebody that's watching this. Maybe you're home watching um, and you go to church. Going to church doesn't make you a believer. I was one of those. I went to church, I enjoyed it. I did. I helped out at church and did things, but I know for sure I wasn't born again. So it was a little after, uh, I think I was about 20 years old when I got born again. And I played the church again for quite a bit. Then after that, I gave my life to Jesus. Although. I went to church and did all these things. I was not born again. I had no personal relationship with Jesus. Could you just tell us a little bit of your born again experience? What was the turning point to make you kind of go that way? Very good question, my brother. You know, I'll say this. Uh, going to church, of course, exposed me. Um, of course, exposes you to religion. That's one. But also exposed me 
to, to the love of the Word of God. I love the Bible. I used to read the Bible, misuse it, misquote it, you know, to just take advantage and just do whatever I wanted to do. But that being said, I knew when I read it. But um, I remember one time I, I went to this Muslim school. I went to Muslim boarding school. And um, there's a guy there. His name was Jonathan Semakula. This guy was a guy that lived a Christian life that was very attractive. Do you understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. He was a guy that, I, man, when he was living his life as a believer, he was very attractive to me. I wasn't born again then, but I went to those Christian uh, born again fellowships. That's what they call them. Because this guy lived like Jesus. I promise you, he was very attractive. So this guy really started that real attraction. You know, to the Lord. Let me say this also to the people that are watching our home. Man, the way we live is really critical. For me, the guy started the journey to me knowing Jesus. The way he lived, he lived like a real believer. Today, I still remember how this guy conducted himself. He was a true, genuine man of God. So it started like that. And thereafter, we became friends. I wasn't born again still. But one day, I was at my sister's place, and there was a guy that was on the radio was preaching. And he said, if you do not know Jesus, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, if you do not believe that he died, I have an opportunity for you right now. He said, put your hands on the radio. I was by myself at home. I put my hands on that radio. Man, I gave my life to Jesus over the radio. Praise God for Amen. radio. Amen. Amen. So that's really how it happened. Yeah. Thereafter, my life changed. Mm -hmm. So right after you get born again, do you do you have an idea of where you want to be are you is the idea of going to us a reality or just take us through the journey how you got here good i mean um, right after i got born again a door opened for me to go to india for further education so i went to india and um i lived there for about three years i was doing school and ministry both really after i gave my life to the lord i think i started to see clearly before that everything was blurry I couldn't see, I didn't know where I was going. My life was, let me say this also to someone at home. Maybe your life is blurry and you don't know where you're going. Maybe the key to unlocking that is giving your life to the Lord, especially if you're not born again. But anyway, side note though, you know, that's how it really happened. So um, I went to India, you know, stayed there for three years. And then from India, eventually, you know, transitioned and came to the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's how it happened. Okay. What were you studying in India? India, I did a bachelor's in commerce. Oh wow, so you're a yeah. businessman. Yeah, shrewd businessman, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so you come to the US, how was the first, because uh, I understand being a Kenyan coming to US, how was adjusting to the American life? Interesting. Yeah, man, look, first off, say, man, what a deal. Man, the best decision I've ever made in my life. <laughs> yeah. Man. I love it. Praise God. It was awesome that I came here. But anyway, the first year, man, was hassle, was, was rough. Because I didn't know a lot of things. One thing that I do know is when you go into a new environment, at least I've learned this, mm -hmm. you've got to learn the culture, you're going to learn the people. Sometimes the way you did things in the past is not necessarily the same way people do things in the new environment. And I know people know this, but the truth is, very few people practically put an effort to make adjustments. To me, it was a struggle because I did not know. I had to learn a lot of things. It was a struggle the first year. But come second year, third year, my life began to change. And slowly, mm -hmm. I got to learn the American ways. Yeah. And then, um, man, life was never the same so, after. When you get born again in Uganda, you come to the U.S. What is, because I know it's different. Obviously, not just the culture, but also the Christian culture is different. How was that adjusting to that? Or did it help you? Or did it kind of take you back for a little bit? Definitely, I would say definitely it helped me. Um, first, when I got born again in Uganda, within three months to four months, I was out. So I didn't really experience much of That's the true. rest of the things, besides the church game, mm -hmm. so to speak, that I was playing before that. But the majority of my first three years of my work with God was in India, so I can speak to what I saw okay, there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's different, you know, again, compared to the U.S. But one thing that I have recognized when I came to the U.S. is there is a deeper, personally, again, it's a personal observation, there's a deeper hunger, you know, for the Word. You know, there's a deeper value for the Word of God that I did not experience that much. I'm not saying it doesn't happen in other places. 
but there is a value that is put on the water guide in this country that I did not see in any other place. So to me, that's a highlight that separates many other places, personally, yeah. that I've been to uh, mm -hmm. from the US. And that obviously attracted you to go deeper for yourself. Absolutely. So as you were going deeper for yourself, is God speaking to you in terms of where he wants you to go? Or are you still just enjoying, you got a study here, you got a in US, you have a relationship with God. Is that your mindset at this time? Actually, good question. Uh, what happens after, you know, when I get, when I go to India, the Lord speaks to me oh. and tells me, when you go to the U.S., I want you to go to Karis Bible College. So let's back up. Yeah. How did you know about Karis? Well, I was in India. It was my little apartment. Very small. Maybe the size of this, maybe this room is very big. Um, very small place. Um, and I was watching Daystar television then. Uh, Andrew Womack, if you know him, he came on the television, the guy was seated down, chill, softly spoken as like, this guy is a lot more like me. And uh, typically you change the channel, but for me, I wanted to listen. And then as I listened, I realized, man, this guy has something sensible to say. And anyway, that's when God spoke to me about Karis Bible College, because at the very end of that show, he talks about Karis. Mm -hmm. I mean, God spoke to me and said, when you go, I did not know when to go. Actually, at that time, we had Karis Bible College uh, uh, extension schools in India. I could have gone to India, but the Lord was very specific. He told me in the U.S. and Colorado. And so, uh, but again, one of the reasons I do believe God spoke to me to do that was because he had called me. There was a call in my life that was already recognized at that time and so for me this was more of a preparation mm -hmm. you know to go deeper in the world does that help yes and i want to go back a little bit you said that there was a calling on your life that was already recognizable by you or by other people absolutely by me first mm -hmm. i do believe before any other person mm -hmm. <laughs> recognizes that you have a call you have to know you have a call yeah the lord has to speak to you because that what what, what other people what are they mm -hmm. confirming yeah, that's you know, true. People have to confirm what the already the Lord has spoken to you. Yeah, you see, that's how it's supposed to be, not to speak to you, kind mm -hmm. of deal. But anyway, with that being said, I recognize that when I was. How did you do that? Because that's I know a lot of people are at my age, they're trying to find what does God want me to do. So how did you recognize your calling? I mean, I, I could I could say a lot of things about this, but one of the things that I did when I was in India and I was studying, I did try and error try on error, try things, and I realize things I do not enjoy. First of all, you can tell by my voice I could not make a good singer. So I knew very well that that was off the charts. I'm not even considering that. You know, because I do believe God does not call you to do that thing that you totally suck at. You know, if you're terrible at it, you know, uh, I don't believe you, that's not probably where your call is. And I, I do believe we're all good at something. But anyway, that being said, uh, and I'm not saying you have to be perfect at it, but you have to be, you recognize also passion. I had a passion, you know, to teach the Word of God. Actually, at that time, I was already an ordained minister at my local church. I was already teaching and just really doing a lot of things at the local church. So I knew for sure mm -hmm. that I was called to teach the Word of God. And so, again, you know that you know that you know. There's yeah. a passion. There's a tremendous desire by resources as people are buying, how do you call this, how do you call them, Game Boys, oh, whatever yeah. you call these things. Um, <laughs> Xbox, mm -hmm. you know, I was buying literature, I was studying, I was reading the word, I was writing, mm -hmm. doing all these things, you know, and I knew, because to be a teacher, you have to be a reader, at least, yes, true. a studier, if mm -hmm. that's the right word, you know, yeah. so to me, that's how I begin to recognize, let's say you want to be, you, you do believe you have a call in your life to sing or to lead in worship, well, I would, I would assume you'd be investing in guitars or keyboards, I mean, Right, yeah. and so to me, it's a trial and error. You gotta find that thing that you have a passion for, or that thing that you wanna bring a difference in. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. What is that that keeps you awake? What is that that will cause your baby to leap if you have a baby? You know, what is it that causes your baby to leap? And I tell you, it's very easy to identify that. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be over 30 years old when you identify over 80 years old, when you identify what God called you to do. You can know the call of God on your life be times when you're little. Yeah, okay, I, that's very good. So, let's, let me stay in India a little bit because a lot of things happen in India that seems to have completely either helped you in your growth or radically changed the way you were doing things. 
So you're already preaching in India, you already know God always spoke to you about coming to Karis. What's another thing in India that happened, uh, godly hopefully, that happened that kind of made you think, wow, it could be the revelation, it could be like a supernatural experience, just something that happened. Because it seems like India was your college in, when it comes to Christianity. That's where you really got to learn and grow. Yeah, I hear you, brother. I mean, I can say a lot of things about India, mm -hmm. but one thing that I do know is that I had an opportunity there, you know, to to minister the word more than any other place. You know, people were really open and I went places, really. And also I had the platform. You know, my pastor then was from Kenya. It's called uh, Pastor Charles Kega Murigi. You know, gave me an opportunity to just minister the word. And so that's it. For me, platform was critical and that helped me. But not only that, I received the revelation of grace at that time that really changed my life. I didn't receive it right at the beginning. I received it maybe two years in okay. you know, when I was there. So to me, that made a tremendous difference yeah. in my personal life. Awesome. Yeah. So you come here to the U.S., do you immediately come to Colorado for carries or do you have a detour? No, I did. I did uh, stay in New York for a little bit, and then after that, mm -hmm. I came to, uh, to Colorado. One of the reasons I stayed there is because my father was already there, so that's where I came to. Okay. So I didn't know nobody in Colorado, but I was headed here. Mm -hmm. In other words, New York was a bus stop for me. Yeah. And it wasn't my final destination. Some people were jumping off and <laughs> did jump off, but I wasn't the final destination, so and to speak. When do you meet your wife? Oh boy, my wife. New York as well. We met in New York. Mm -hmm. I like saying it this way. I don't know if she likes, likes it very much. I like saying it that my wife met me. You know, I didn't meet my wife. She met you? <laughs> yeah, praise God. It's a deal or a deal. But anyway, yeah. the other side is true too. I met my wife. Yeah, so. How long uh, have you been married now? Uh, we're going to five years. Five years and two kids. Two kids. What advice would you have for, because you're kind of a young parent and young husband. What advice would you give to people who are heading in that direction? Well, a lot of things I can say about that. <laughs> One thing, pray. You know, let me, for real, let me say this also seriously. One thing that I have discovered that I tell to younger folks that I get to speak to my brother, number one thing is, because someone is born again is not enough. You know, usually we say, do not be an equally yoked with unbelief. I get it. I believe in it. But I do believe there is more to it. You know, what's the point of getting married to this dude that is born again, but he's a colonel, colonel, Christian. To me, one, someone has to be born again. That's where we start. Two, you gotta be filled with the Holy Ghost. You gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, and I'm, I, I'm, I, I tell you, this is critical to me. But number three, we're gonna be headed the same direction. If you're going north, if I'm going north and you're going south, you know, it could be risky. Because if you truly love the Lord, if both of you truly love the Lord, um, if you're going to a different direction, that could be potential damage, could do potential damage mm -hmm. to your marriage, to your relationship. Again, a lot of things I can say about that. Yeah. Maybe you need to buy my book on that. Just kidding. I don't have any <laughs> marriage. But, yeah. He does have books, though, and I'll put links underneath the uh, video on YouTube, so, on Amazon, so you can go get the books. Very good books. And where's my book, by the way? You're supposed to bring it. Your book is in, uh, it's, it's traveling. It's tra yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Anyway. <laughs> so you meet your wife and y'all move here to Colorado. How was coming, because weather-wise, that's a lot of changes. You go from Uganda where it's dry, and then you go to India, it's hot anyway where you are. Yeah, same. Then you, you go to New York where it's cold, and humid and then you come here where it's uh, dry again. How is How did you adjust? Because I hate cold like, and everybody knows me. They know that. Well, I, to me, it's not a problem to adjust. I mean, the Lord knew when He was creating us that we need adjustments and so that's something the Lord had to worry about. For mm -hmm. me, I just go places. Yeah. I go where the Lord sends me. If it's, it's, it's hot like hell, so be it. I'll make adjustments. If it's cold like you know, I go, but the point is, to me, adjustment was not a problem. Yeah. I go anywhere, I just, I don't crack. <laughs> He's a strong man. Praise God. So, back to serious stuff. Yeah, for uh, real. <laughs> you moved to Colorado, how 
and then obviously you're going to school because you know you want to go you, you know you want to be a teacher that is your calling you've done it before and God has given you all those revelation how did you get to where you are now and I'm not gonna say where you are now because I want you to tell the people so you can take go on the journey with us yeah I mean I went to Paris Actually, I did my first year of correspondence when I was in New York. Okay. Because one, let me say this also to those that are viewing, you know, sometimes if you're headed north, it's best to travel five miles an hour than zero. Does that make sense? And so I knew where I was headed. And one of the ways I could go there, I could get started, or get some momentum, is starting to do carries through correspondence. And so I did that because I knew where I was going. I never wanted to lose track of where I was headed. And so I started to do correspondence. Showed up for second year, did my third year. Um, yeah, and so. And you, I, knew, I know this because that's what his third year, I met him when I was doing second year. He was security. Because one thing I want to kind of, I want you to highlight is the journey of, because I, I believe in the journey. And if you, if in the Bible, you'll see God taking us like David, he was supposed to be a king. He started out as a shepherd. He was in the military for a while. He left and he was in the wilderness leading people and then became the king. Mm -hmm. How was your journey to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, uh, during those two years that when I was physical carries here in Colorado, um, in Willem Park, um, I, was, I did security as a job. You know, I, I needed to find a way to survive. I was new in the area, you know, and I had to do something. So I did that for two years and uh, Man, the Lord taught me a lot of things in there. Sometimes we do jobs and we think um, it's a dead-end job. Let me speak to somebody online. I mean, that is watching at home or wherever you are. Uh, maybe you're doing a job and maybe they've told you it's a dead end. It's going nowhere. <laughs> it's leading to nowhere. Give up. You know, I'm here to tell you, don't listen to all that nonsense because the truth is, I mean, I've, I know a lot of people that have done things. Andrew Womack, you used to pour concrete. You heard the story? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And people would look like, how dare you pour concrete? You're a preacher. Who cares, really? At the end of the day, my point in saying this is, is this, my brother. I'm helping somebody at home, I do believe as well. Is that, I mean, I did that. I did it to the best of my ability, the best that I knew. But I knew. I was just passing through. <laughs> it was just, again, another bus stop. Mm -hmm. But it was not where I was headed. So I was happy to do it. And to me, you have to learn to humble yourself sometimes and just do certain things. And to me, it was really a great teaching moment and all these things. I learned a lot of things dealing with people, customer service, and just having a heart of a shepherd, mm -hmm. so to speak. Because really, that's what you're doing. Personally, what you, when you're doing a security job, you're putting your life on the edge. It's reality. Maybe uh, anything happened, maybe I'll be out. So be it. But anyway, I did all that. I'm saying all that to say is that, man, maybe even somebody's watching at home and you're doing something looks like it's going nowhere. The Lord is training you. That is preparation ground. Do not despise little beginnings because the Lord is taking you places. And so, little after that, I transitioned into another role at Caris as um, serving as the assistant dean of education. But again, uh, security prepared me for that. You may say security has nothing to do with that. Well, I'm here to tell you security has a lot to do with it, mm -hmm. okay? Because I knew exactly where I was going yeah. and, and the Lord positioned me to do that, to serve in that area. I mean, the Lord just gave me favor, favor, favor when I was doing that. Mm -hmm. I do believe when time came for me to head out and step into something new, you know, relationships were built, favor was established in many people's lives, and I mean, you know, and my life as well, and all those things. So by the time I got into that, it was just, you know, smooth in a sense, because again, I had grown in other areas of my life. So I know you, you're an author, like we've mentioned. When did that passion to write kind of begin? The passion of writing began when I was in India. Again, I was studying, writing, you know, I didn't know, I didn't have a desire to publish anything, but I was studying and writing anyway. The best way, even when I was at school, the best way I studied personally was by writing, you know? Interesting. Um, I, I study, I write what I studied. I study, I write what I studied, kind of deal. And so that's the way I studied. So that's really how it started. And so in India, when I was studying the Word, and God spoke to me a lot of things, and slowly 
transitioned into that when I came to Caris during my second year, I believe, I released my very first book. Mm -hmm. um, and then towards the end of second year, I believe, I released the second one. And then on and on, it's gone. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What is, before we kind of get on, off the book subject, when it comes to writing, how do, how do you get inspiration like, to write? Because all the four books that you have, they're very different. In, in this, you can, I mean, obviously they're related in terms of talking about being a Christian, but the ideas are very different ideas. How do you come up with that? Well, again, to me, that's birth out of your walk with God and your relationship with God. And I think the certain things that God gives you more insight or a greater revelation in. And I think um, because of that, then you can focus on those and develop those subjects out more than you would have done on other subjects. And so, for example, my very first book was Jesus, God, or Man. When I was in India, I had an experience with uh, Muslim guys that went to the same college with me. We played for the college there together. They were good friends. However, they were pulling me into the Islam direction and I was saying no. This is the right way. So they kept challenging the fact or the truth that Jesus is God. And I kept saying, Jesus is God. They kept, they kept saying, he's not God, he's a prophet. And so because of that challenge, it caused me to go study this out so I could defend my position before him. And eventually it became bigger study that eventually turned into a book. For example, again, it was a passion. That book was written from an area of defense, apologetics, yet other subjects were written from other areas, you know, prosperity or good health. And you just wanted to talk about something that probably is missing. For example, my second book, I talk about that. I talk about health, but from a different perspective. What everybody else is not talking about, the Lord showed me that. So I was like, man, this is a powerful thing. But anyway, does that help? Yeah. How about the other book, The uh, God Questions? Uh, do you have questions? Is that you? That's your book, right? Yes. How, well, because it's not, it's like a question and answer book. What is, how, what is that? No, that relates again in the beginning to the very first one that I wrote. Mm. When I was growing up and I was younger, I had a lot of questions, especially when I just became a younger Christian. Man, I don't know about you at home, but I mean, I had a lot of questions. And very few people were willing to answer my questions, but nonetheless, I found some answers. The Lord really answered a lot of the questions that I had. And honestly, I'm satisfied in a sense. I don't know everything, definitely. You could tell by my looks, <laughs> amen. But the truth is, um, I, I, I just had questions and the Lord has answered a lot of my questions. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus got a man, the very first book was a question I was asking and yeah. I was answering. And so my newest one, got questions, got answers, is the same perspective I'm really putting together questions that I have heard in my life, or have had in my life, and, 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 and I'm trying to answer those from a biblical um, perspective the Lord has taught me personally um, to help another person out that probably has questions like yeah. I had. Because I, I want to get into writing, that's why I'm curious about writing and whatnot. So one last question about writing, because yes. I want to be a writer, I think we've talked, I, we might have talked about this before, and that's why I'm, all, I'm very intrigued. What what is your process? Everybody has the based on your personality. Everybody's different. With your personality, how what, how best do you write? Hmm. Again, good question, brother. Um, again, it depends on the person, like you said. Uh, it depends on your personality. I don't have one, so I have no personality. But uh, let me say this also. Um, for me, the way I write is I get my pen, <laughs> my paper. And I write, no, just kidding. <laughs> okay, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, just kidding. No, honestly, really depends. Everybody has a different approach they use. But for me, I study the word on a regular basis. Okay. Everything is born out of there. I, I don't sit there and I say, I am writing a book. I'm just studying and the Lord highlights certain things to me and teaches me certain things that I believe can be a benefit to another individual. You know, eventually I compile those and turn them into a, a, a book. I don't sit there and say I'm writing a book. I, I've done that once actually. Uh, my book called Where's Your Prosperity? That was, the Lord just downloaded this book to me in a shower. And I think I wrote that book in about an hour. Man, it was just supernatural. That's probably a very supernatural experience that I've ever had. It's a thick book. Yeah, well, yeah. But the Lord gave me a lot of detail, a lot of things about it. I never stopped, I never put my pen down when I was writing that book. Anyway, 
point is it was supernatural. The experience writing that is different from the experience of writing other books. Yeah. Other books I was studying, the Lord highlighted the same things to me, mm -hmm. and then I began to put those together. Okay. So for me, my writing is birthed out of my study. Wow. Basically. Okay, that's awesome. Personal study. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not really writing to write. I'm writing because mm -hmm. as I'm studying, the Lord is teaching me. I want to communicate and help somebody. And then you end up with like a lot of notes. Correct. Okay, awesome. So let's get back to. But before we get back to that, let me say this. Mm -hmm. If you want to write, you need to write. That's it's powerful revelation right there. That's true. You, that's true. One of those. If things. you're just thinking it and thinking, your thinking will get it to paper or to ink. You're very deceived. If you want to write, you gotta write. Amen. That's revelation. Yes, Amen. Sir. I like that. I guess that maybe that could be for me. Just write. Uh, so let's get back to Caris. You become assistant dean, and what are some of the things that you learned? Because I I did this interview about three. My second interview ago, I asked the pastor this question. I'm gonna ask you the same question. Because when I came to Caris, and I came from like a small. Uh, I went to a satellite school in Cincinnati and it was about like 10 people and it was very, everybody's very intimate. I came to like this big school, I mean not big, obviously bigger school and the, the things that I thought, you know, when I was over there, I was one of a kind, I could do all these different things, I come here, I'm one of many. And it was kind of challenging my, uh, what's it called? my idea of what I was good at because some all of a sudden the other people were better than me at something. You being an assistant dean, what was how would you answer that question and when you went to Caris coming from India, did, did that affect you at all? Your question is very broad. I don't even know how to attack this. I want you to take your time. You know, don't um, rush it. Don't rush it. Why don't you rephrase that one more time for me please? Alright, I'm gonna break it down for you. Yeah. So let's first question out of that huge one. When you were in Caris the first time you went, coming from India to New York, were you overwhelmed? Were you in, like, threatened? How was how how were you in terms of your position and who you are? Because all of a sudden, you have other people around you who can probably do what you do sometimes better, some then they're different. Were you secure in who you are, or were you still? I think I think uh, being secure. Um in who you are or in the Lord, to me it's not something you achieve one time and you never have to grow in that area. Some, it's an area where you continue growing in. And so to answer your question, I'd say when I came in, to me I was not overwhelmed. Why should I be? I wanted to be there. I was looking forward to it. I mean I was surrounded with all these heavy hitters. You know, like I, like I say, you know, man, why would I be overwhelmed? Man, I'm in exactly the right place I wanted to be in. So I'm just looking forward to it, learning. One thing I can say though, is I was looking forward to learning because the Lord had told me, go prepare for the ministry that I have for you. So I knew I came in to learn and I was just prepared to learn, learn, learn. Okay, so but you were secure, you were good. What if somebody's not, what would you say to that? Well again, um, I can't just transpose my experience to you, but this one thing I would say, First, you really have to know who you are in Christ. You know, your identity in Christ. If your identity is in things, is in people, is in your looks, is in your accomplishments, you cannot be secure. Really, you have to lay those things down. One thing that I have seen at Caris Bible College and Romac Ministries is, you know, people coming from all walks of life with all these crazy resumes and CVs and all these things. But one thing I have seen, I've seen a spirit of humility. They come and lay those things down, they serve, and they just, you know, plug in. So to me, that tells me they know who they are. Their identity is not in their accomplishments. So to me, if you can really get to know who you are in Christ and get over who you are in the world and your achievements and your looks and your accomplishments and, you know, all these things, to me, you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, you just ease right in because really in the spirit, you're not better than me. I'm not better than you. So, really for us to get intimidated and all these things just because we get caught up in the flesh. Yeah. We're a colonel. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. So anyway, as a, as a dean, what were some of the things that you learned that you're going to take into your next chapter of life? 
a lot of things I've learned that I could take probably more hours doing this. Yeah. But some of the things that I really learned is, of course, dealing with people. There is art in dealing with people, and this is not something that you learn, that you, you stop learning it. In other words, you continue learning in this area. And so that's one thing that at least I can say I've learned. Um, re building relationships, you know, that's one thing. Let me say this also to someone at home. Man, it's not just to me an interview with this dude right here. I, I do believe I'm ministering to somebody at home. But let me say this, brother. If you're up there and you're watching this, maybe you get into a new environment, try to build relationships. Everything rises and falls in relationships. And so to me, that's one thing that I've really grasped, you know, working as a dean, building relationships, not just with students, with staff, with guests, instructors that come in and all these things, building relationships, learning to serve. You know, another thing that I also want to say is your title. It's not who you are, you know. I, I hardly say I am the assistant dean of education. I don't say that. And you know, you could say you're being so technical and all. No, but the point is, that's not who I am. It's quiet in here. That's not who I am. My point is, I serve in that role, but that's not who I am. And what it does to your mindset, it reminds you that you're a servant. <laughs> you're serving, you know, in that capacity. But that's not who you are. And so that stops it from getting to your head. Amen? It's critical. But anyway, what else am I supposed to say on this? No, that's perfect. It's, this is my first time. Because when I was there in, in school, he was also a student. And I never got to hear him teach. He became a dean after I left. And I just got to hear uh, how everybody said he's one of my favorite professors. So this was my first time. And that was just me sitting back, just like taking it in. I'm like, wow, <laughs> I'm, I wish I got to see it. But anyway, so to kind of wrap this up. I want to I want to finish asking you three questions, and they're gonna be simple answers. But obviously, they're simple questions. But I want some deep answers. I'm <laughs> playing, playing. Yeah. By the way, so question number one: In your life, the way God has brought you from three different countries, all the growth that you've experienced, mm -hmm. what is the one thing that you just give glory to God for? And I know it's a lot. Just so let's try to make pick one. If you can't, let's do two. I mean, I feel like I'm insulted to, to, to just give God one thing. I mean, everything about my life is a written story about the faithfulness and the goodness of God. A little boy born and raised in Africa, lived in poverty, saw some degree of prosperity, left the country, went to India, came to the States, went to Caris Bible College, and God just gave me tremendous favor, and I rose through the ranks. And I'm saying this to say, man, only God can do such a thing. Only a person can go from hell. I mean, only God can cause a person to go from hell to heaven. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, my entire journey, and I know you want one thing, but to me, I'll, I'll be doing the Lord, in, you know, it wouldn't be fair for me to really just know one thing. But man, let me say this. God has been really, really good to me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I'm saying that to say because I'm not surprised he's been good to me. You know why? Why? Because he's a good guy. That's who he is. There's no other choice, no option. God has been so good to me. If it is one thing I can say, I have seen the faithfulness, the goodness of God, and the land of the living. Oh, yeah. Man, God yeah. has been good to this fellow right here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but you can't talk me out of it. It's for real, for real, for real. If you thought that question was hard, this one might be harder. Let's see what you got. And you might have mentioned this, but if you have, just repeat it. Because for me, there's some revelations that I can look back that God has revealed to me about Himself that have completely kind of changed how I see Him and my, my Christian walk. What would you say like your top two revelations? It could be a scripture that you saw and it just like completely changed you. Or it could be like a supernatural event. But what would be your top two Revelations or experiences or encounters with God that have completely shifted you? My, my encounters with the Lord have been through the Word. Okay. I've never had a tremendous crazy vision. Mm -hmm. I never had bells and whistles. I never had a dove come and fall on my shoulders. I never had any of these things. I have experienced and learned about God through the Word. And so, I mean, a lot of revelations, but one, 
and it's very common, and I don't want to be, you know, I just want to keep it as basic as possible, but again, the goodness of God, the revelation first of the grace of God. The Bible says, Romans, I believe, 1 16 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Greek, to the, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So I'm saying that to say, the revelation of the grace of God, the revelation of the goodness of God, I do believe it's number one revelation at the top of any person that truly knows the Lord. There's nothing. Understanding the true nature of God will cause your relationship with Him, with him to go to another level. So to me, that's number one. Number two, um, again, really related to, to that is the love of God. Man, understanding that God loves you will draw you to Him more than anything else would. If a little girl dating a little boy, <laughs> they know if the God understands that this guy really loves her, that doesn't cause her to run away, causes her to draw closer. But then I'm saying this to say, for me, the grace of God and the second one is the love of God. But I can even give and go further and say, for me, above all, which really summarizes all of that, is the integrity of God's word. Let me say this also to somebody that's listening at home. You know, maybe you have doubts about the word of God and people have said things about the word of God. Maybe you're buying all that stuff. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. Don't believe that junk. That is not God. The Bible says clearly, okay, that the scriptures were given were inspired of God. And if anybody doesn't like it, that's not a problem. But the truth is this. They're not God. And I'm not going to listen to what they're saying over what God is saying. I'm going to believe God over believe any other person. So God says, this my word is inspired, is infallible, has no errors, is accurate. To me, that would transform your life because your basis for your faith springs off of the word of God. If you do not have firm belief, firm trust in God's word, then you can believe anything. Everything else that you're standing on is shaky, is on shaky ground. For your belief system to be stable, you need to come to that place where you truly believe that the Word of God, the Bible, is the inspired Word of God. It doesn't matter what CNN, Crooked News Network says, doesn't matter what all these other people say, doesn't matter what your old professor ready to retire says, Jesus says, that the Bible is God's word. And he quoted it over and over and over. There's no one time he said, what Moses wrote was not the word of God. He quoted it. Now, I'm going to choose to listen to Jesus over any other individual. Does that help? Wow, okay. Okay. Ah, last question. Ooh. <laughs> this is not going to be as challenging. But hopefully I get to see some more of the preaching on this one. Oh, yeah. So... I know there's going to be young people watching this. What would you say to them about... Because we kind of live... The times right now are really shaky times. So what would be your word that you would give to people? Not old, young, don't matter. What would you give them? What's the word you would give them right now? Well, a lot of things I can say. Not one word. But one thing I would say is, man, just work on your relationship with the Lord. I would say is work out your salvation. Philippians 2.13, I believe with fear and trembling. It doesn't say what for your salvation because you do not work for it. You get born again by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says you believe that he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. That's how it happens, but it says walk out your salvation you know, with fear and trembling. In other words, already on the inside, you're working it out. You're living it. So like, one thing that I would say, again, if you know the Lord is man, then live like it. <laughs> you know, man, don't live like the devil. Don't live like the neighbor, your neighbor next door that's just living like, anyway. But the point is, that's one thing I can say. Another thing I can say, man, just get in the Word. The best way you're going to know the Lord is by sticking your nose in the Word. Forget Facebook, forget all these things. I tell you, if you want to separate yourself from the crowd, there's certain things that you have to do that everybody else is not doing. You don't just drift to the top of the mountain. <laughs> You work to get there. Does it make sense? And so some of you, you sleep like 10 hours a, a, a day or a night and you know, you're, you're just 
bunch of your time is wasted and all this fluff and all this garbage and all this trash. I promise you, when you're snoring, we are up studying, seeking the Lord, and then you wonder, I want what he has, but it doesn't just come by wanting it. <laughs> you got to put in the due diligence. And so again, you know, you got to put in the work, you know, seek the Lord, just get your nose in the word and study the word. And God will speak to you, will transform your life through the word. The number one thing that you can always rely on to transform your life is the word of God. Amen. Amen. And nothing else we can add. Wow. I'm happy to see my man. <laughs> I've never got to see this because I play soccer with him and that's a different side. When he was students, we just joke around. I've not got to see the Dean side. But this is a pleasure. Thanks, thanks again for coming on here. And before we leave, you want to just pray for the people watching? Of course. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for these your precious people that are watching. Um, Father, I know a lot of things I've said. I've looked into the camera and I've spoken to them. I did that because I truly believe that you wanted to speak to them and communicate to them. So, Father, trust also that as they go back home, as they listen to this, Father, speak the Holy Spirit. You quicken these words and things I've shared in this um, interview with my brother here. Father, to their lives and just cause them to remember, Father, that you will burn a passion for your word, a passion to know you, Father, more than anything else. And so, Father, just thank you so much that as I speak right now, lives are being changed through this video. Amen, Father, just give you all the glory, trusting that, Father, we're going to hear testimonies about your goodness. We're going to hear testimonies about your faithfulness. We're going to hear testimonies about your grace and your love for your people. Father, we just bless you and thank you so much for your faithfulness. We give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the honor. I will call these people blessed. Man, as, as they're taking time to watch this, Father, we bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, for watching this. And remember, we all have a story. What's your story? Goodbye. Hey, you made it till the end. Thank you for tuning in and watching this amazing interview. If you want to get a hold of Emmanuel, you can do so on social media. He also has a blog where you can read some of his writings. God bless you. Until next time.